We just published our first newsletter to LinkedIn, and I want to show you exactly how you can do the same. Hi, my name is Chris Casolino, and I am the co-founder and head of services at Uptown Creation, a LinkedIn lead generation and B2B marketing company. So the newsletter feature on LinkedIn is something that is really powerful and one of the newer features that LinkedIn is really rewarding people from using. So we published our first newsletter today, and out of the you know, about 2,000 followers that we have on our company page, 84 of those have subscribed so far in you know less than three hours. So those numbers, while they're not all that crazy, they're really indicative of loyal users that will get a lot of value from a newsletter that you'd be posting. So the first thing that I want to go into is who's able to use LinkedIn newsletters and how you can get access to it. Then I'm going to go through the two different ways that you can publish and post a newsletter on LinkedIn. And that'll be through your personal page or through a company page. And then I'm going to show you some of the best practices for publishing a newsletter and making sure that it can be as engaging as possible and using the tools that you have to your advantage. So without further ado, let's jump into how you get access in the first place. So I'll put a number of links in the description of this video below, but the first link will be talking about how to get access to LinkedIn newsletters. So this is something that they'll be rolling out on a regular basis, but one criteria is that you need to have creator mode access and enabled. So everybody can enable creator mode, but it's not enabled by default. So the way to enable creator mode is to go to your personal LinkedIn page and then hit creator mode. Now, if you haven't turned it on, it'll show up as off. And what you want to do is kind of go through. You can add these hashtags and topics that you talk about if you want. It's not a necessity. It'll show you what's available to you right away. And then you can just kind of turn that tool on. So creator mode is the newer feature that LinkedIn has pushed out that allows you to get access to new tools as they come out and also access to analytics and just things that are going to help you create content and better represent yourself on LinkedIn. It's LinkedIn's way that they're trying to, you know, step into the creator economy, encourage people to post more and in result, give them access to new and improved tools earlier than everybody else. So the way that you can check if you have access to write a newsletter is if you're on the main page and you were going to make a post, you'll want to click write an article. So that's going to be where it would come from. And then you can choose your personal page or you can choose a company page. I'm going to go with my personal page for right now. And you, as you can see right up here, you can choose to create a newsletter. Now this will be something that not everybody has access to, especially if you just turned on that creator mode, but you want to check back periodically because they will be rolling this feature out. If you do have access to create a newsletter, then you're in business and you can create that newsletter. Now, if you don't see it on your personal page, I would recommend going back to your homepage. And if you do have a company page, going through that same process, choosing the company page and seeing if you have access to write a newsletter there. What I've found from my testing is that usually the personal page is going to get access to it first. And then shortly after you'll be able to do it on your company page as well. Now we published a newsletter from our company page. And now when you publish a newsletter, it's going to prompt you with something like this. So you're going to create a title. You're going to create the frequency of your newsletter. You're going to upload an image and then you're going to put a little description that could be 120 characters. So the newsletter title needs to be 30 characters or less. The newsletter description needs to be 120 characters or less. And then you can choose a cadence from anywhere from a daily newsletter to a monthly newsletter. We chose weekly. Then you can upload a image in 300 by 300 resolution and go from there. But the first thing that you're wanna, gonna wanna do is create a compelling title. Now, I did a little research just by searching the newsletters on LinkedIn, and what we landed on was LinkedIn Made Simple. Now, we brainstormed a bunch of ideas. We tried to include the word sales in there, but the one that we ultimately landed on was just something that, ironically, is simple enough 
to include the word simple itself. Now, I think creating a title that really describes what you're going to be talking about in the shortest way possible is the way to go because you're really going to have to grab somebody's attention early on. So brainstorming titles is kind of the, the first thing that you're going to want to do when thinking about publishing a newsletter. From there, I would take a little bit of time to do that and then look at the format of other people's newsletters. Gary Vaynerchuk is always a good person to kind of see what they're doing. You can see, sorry, my Google Home went off and it freaked me out. Um, you can see the thumbnail um, and that's going to be a big part of your initial click-through rate for a newsletter. So Gary Vaynerchuk creates really, really good thumbnails. Um, and scrolling through, you can see kind of how easy it is to have a call to action as well as the title of those individual newsletters. Then if we click in to the newsletter itself, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with um, linking and hyperlinking. And I'll show you that in a second. One thing I wanna go into is when you're writing a newsletter, this first paragraph is something that you can consistently put at the top of your newsletter that just gives that little snippet for everybody that's a newcomer. You know, welcome to LinkedIn 360, a monthly recap of the most valuable content on business, social media, marketing, and more is how they started off. I think giving that synopsis really is going to captivate people's attention and also give that short, you know, elevator pitch to anybody that's new reading your newsletter. So what they can get out of it. When you're thinking about writing a newsletter, making sure that there's easy and actionable items spread throughout it is how you're going to get the most value from it. Now, I really like the ability to hyperlink posts. So what that means is that if you make a really good post on LinkedIn, you can hyperlink to that post, especially if it exemplifies something that you're talking about in the newsletter itself. This will be a way that you can share a lot of value in that newsletter without taking up a bunch of space. Because, you know, since you're able to hyperlink to this video, for example, you could write what this video encompasses, but it's a minute long video and that would probably take up a lot more space. So being able to just hyperlink to the video itself that's already been a post in the past is going to shorten your newsletter, but still jam pack it with that value that everybody's looking for. I'd recommend going through some of Gary Vaynerchuk's and other content creators newsletters and picking what you like and what you don't like. You can see that he's hyperlinking to a bunch of other videos and content there. And then if we go to the very bottom, there's kind of a synopsis at the end with a ton of different links. So to Spotify playlists, to discord groups, to signing up for wine text, to going to every other social media platform, that is going to be the true power of newsletters is hyperlinking to other places and other ecosystems that, you know, you can kind of cross pollinate with newsletters are amazing for this. And I would highly recommend looking into ways that you can cross pollinate while still providing an extreme amount of value. Now, something else that I wanted to show you is the way that you can add rich media. So this is another link that I have in the description, but being able to add and change the size of images, videos, and all of that within your article is something that I really like as well. So if we go to the newsletter that was posted today, you can see that I hyperlinked our YouTube channel. I hyperlinked my LinkedIn page, Brian's LinkedIn page, our company LinkedIn page. I put a bunch of images throughout it, hyperlinked to sales navigator, hyperlinked to schedule a call. And then I also included a YouTube video that is embedded within the newsletter itself. So people can click off to go to YouTube or they can just watch the video directly within this newsletter, which I really, really like. So again, just taking advantage of all the different ways that you can use rich media and videos and images is going to keep your newsletter readable, actionable, and most importantly, engaging. So like I said, this way to add images and other rich media is something that I've hyperlinked to in the description below. I've also, the final hyperlink that I put down there is basic instructions on how to create your newsletter, how to publish it, and then how to edit it. So those are going to be things that you'll be able to read through pretty easily and require a little bit less of a description from me. Hopefully this video is helpful and you should be able to know 
you know, if you have access to a newsletter and how to check to see if you have access. If you don't have access, how to go about gaining access to the newsletter feature. And then all the different ways that you can keep your audience engaged and coming back for more with that newsletter. I think the newsletters are really powerful tools to cross pollinate your ecosystem and take advantage of traffic that's already there, as well as give you a reason to really grow that LinkedIn company page that many people often forget about. So for everybody that stayed around this long, I'm going to show you one final tip that is really slept on in the ecosystem of LinkedIn. So if you go to your company page on LinkedIn, you'll see in the top right, if you're an admin, grow your followers. You can invite up to 250 people that you're connected with each and every month. So this will this will roll over on the first of every month and you'll be able to invite another 250 people. Now you'll need to click through each one and that's a deterrent for a lot of people, but it's worth taking you know, the 20 to 30 minutes that it might take. If you're quick, it'll take you a lot less, but if you're really handpicking the people that you're inviting, it might take you that long, but it's worth it just because of how difficult it usually is to grow a LinkedIn company page. I'd recommend getting that company follower count to at least over a thousand because that just adds another level of credibility. Hopefully this last tip as well as this video as a whole provided some value. If it did, please consider subscribing and liking this video. That's the free way that really helps us out. And if you want to talk to somebody on my team, go to uptowncreation.com and you can book a call there.